Someone will say, I'm allowed to do anything. Yes, but not everything is good for you. I could say that I'm allowed to do anything, but I'm not going to let anything make me its slave. Someone else will say, food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food. Yes, but God will put an end to both eventually. The body is not to be used for sexual immorality, but to serve the Lord. And the Lord provides for the body. God honored the master's body by raising it from the grave. He'll treat yours with the same resurrection power. Until that time, remember that your bodies are created with the same dignity as the master's body. You wouldn't take the master's body off to a whorehouse, would you? I should hope not. There's more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is as much spiritual mystery as physical fact. As written in scripture, the two become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy, leaving us more lonely than ever, the kind of sex that can never become one. But the one who joins himself to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Run away from immorality. Every sin that it's possible for someone to commit happens outside the body, but immorality involves sinning against your own body. Or don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, the spirit God gave you, so that you don't belong to yourselves. You were quite an expensive purchase, so glorify God with your body. In this part of scripture, Paul's explaining to us that just because we can do something doesn't mean that we necessarily should do something. He's saying that just because we can do something doesn't mean that it's the best thing for us. Paul's talking to the people in Corinth. Corinth had become the epicenter for all things sexually immoral. The Corinthians took sex, what it was originally designed for, and they distorted it. They perverted it. Paul had recognized that this attitude and these influences were starting to affect the church, so he wanted to address it with the people of Corinth. I've talked to so many people that think that the church is all about rules and that the Bible is just a big book of rules and that God's just waiting to catch us when we slip up. And that's just not, that's not the way God views us and that's not the way that God wants us to see him. And, you know, Paul talks about sex and sexuality so much, not because it's the biggest and worst thing, but because it affects us so much. It affects our bodies, it affects our spirits, it affects our minds. My name is Josh Espinosa. And I'm Maddie Camp. We've been together for eight and a half years of wonderful togetherness. Yes. Bliss. Uh, and we are getting married in 211 days. I think I was most inspired or why I chose to have more of like a Christ-centered relationship started back like what I was saying with my family and that that's what I grew up as with the examples that were set forth before me and the people that I surrounded with or myself with. I think my friends played a huge role in how I wanted to live my life. And I think that's something I can't put a value on. Um, even in high school, my sophomore year of high school, um, my friends and I had really talked about it of, this is super important to us, the subject of saving ourselves for marriage. So I think that just led into, by the time we started dating, that was almost like a standard of, he knew that I had made that commitment and it, you know, we were going to wait regardless of how long we ended up dating or now are getting married. It's something that's kind of always been a constant for me. If I could give myself advice when I was <clears throat> 17, I would have, um, I would have tried to change the baseline for how we talk about sex in, in, in Christian relationships. Uh, I think so many times I heard the message of, don't have sex, here's why. Um, and I, I, would, I would have wanted it presented as, uh, what's your end goal as a person? And my end goal as a person is to develop a loving, committed relationship with Christ. And as you think about, okay, well, what are the ways that I can do that? And then you, you step back and think, okay, well, here are the ways that you can meet that larger purpose goal. What you do with your body is one of them. I feel like so many people look at what God says about sex or behavior as a set of rules, as a set of rigid regulations 
of him trying to limit our fun. And so because of that, we either dismiss what he says altogether, or we ask the question, well, how far can I go? How far is too far? But that isn't what this passage is about. That isn't what God is about. He doesn't want us to live in such a way that we're doing just what we can to get by. That we're trying not to make him mad or, or that we're just in this to get our ticket to heaven and go on about our lives. That's not the gospel. That's not the good news of Jesus Christ. It, it's not about our performance. It's not about me living as close to the edge, as close to the line without going over. If it were about my performance, if it were about our performance, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross in the first place. It's about his performance and what he did. It's not about us living by a set of rigid rules. God loves us so much that he died for us. There's a great definition of grace, um, and it goes like this. It says, grace is unconditional acceptance given to an undeserving person by an unobligated giver. I want to say that one more time. Grace is unconditional acceptance given to an undeserving person by an unobligated giver. God is the only person that offers that to us through Jesus. And it's not that God forgets about the laws that he has set up in the Bible. It's so easy for us to think that the whole, the whole Old Testament is just old news and that with Jesus, God just forgot about that. But that's not the case. Jesus fulfilled the law so that we don't have to earn God's love. It's not that God is trying to limit us. He's trying to give us the very best. Let's think about it in the most simple way we could. Let's think about a car. A car drives on the road, and on the road there are guardrails or center lines. There are parameters for a car to drive on. And so at first glance, we might think that the road is really restricted. The car can't go wherever it wants to go. The car can't do whatever it wants to do. The road helps it get to where it's going but the road could appear restrictive. Well, if you really think about it, is the road actually really restrictive? Because if you take a car off of a road, what does it do? I mean, it can be fun to go off-roading for a little bit, and most cars can handle it, but you're never gonna get anywhere worthwhile. You could get sick. You, you could get stuck. Your car could break down because when it's on a road, the car is free to be who the car is. The car is meant to drive fast. It's meant to go somewhere worthwhile. It's actually freeing and liberating and beneficial for a car to be on the road. So how does that relate to us and, and, and what God wants for us? It may seem like it's restrictive. It may seem like God is limiting my fun or what I want to do with my life, but that's where Paul goes, comes in and says, you can do anything you want, but should you? Because is it best for you? Is it best for a car to never be on a road? I don't think so. So no matter where you find yourself tonight, know that Jesus loves you so much and he loves all of us and he comes to right where we are to show us love. But the awesome thing about Jesus is that he loves us too much to just let us stay in our current circumstances. And so he offers to take our hand and to guide us along the path that he has for us. John 10, 10 says, Jesus came to give us life to the fullest, life in abundance, a life better than any life we could ever imagine. And all we need to do is turn and say, I want that life, God, and I want to follow you. And Jesus promises that he will guide us and he will take us on the journey of this life that he has for us. And he wants us all to live such amazing lives. And he wants to see all of us filled with him. I mean, he wants to see all of us feel his love so that we can give that to other people. He created us and so he knows us better than anyone. And so he sets out these guidelines for us to help us live this better life that he has for us.
And so know that whether you are just hearing about Jesus now or you've heard about him for a long time but don't know what, what to think, or if you've been following Jesus, we all have areas to grow and we all have ways that we can let Jesus transform us. And so tonight, I hope and pray that each one of you will experience God's love for you.